Hello there everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 7. Uh, I've decided to kind of go and start uploading these a bit more. I want to get, you know, this done by the end of this year and if I keep doing one a week, it will be a long time before we finish it. So, we have now reached Calm and I gotta say, um, one thing about this game that I really do enjoy is the whole thing that and it happens multiple times where um, you'll go into a new town, and your party members will just all split off and do their own things, and this happens multiple times, and uh, honestly, when I first saw it happen in the game, I'm like, oh, it's just gonna be a one-off thing, but no, this happens quite a bit, and if you see in my party there, Cloud's the only one. Um, I think if you go to buy items and do equipment and stuff, I think it will treat it as everyone's together, but for the most part, you're just you. Um, and it's, it's, it's a nice feature, because then you get to see them go out into the town and sort of interact with stuff, and that's something that a lot of RPGs, you know, don't really have. You, you know, they go into Cloud, if they will, the whole, you know thing where they morph into one character and then they sort of just become like attachments to him right but this well i mean like in other rpgs in this game it's totally not like that and i like that quite a bit but calm here you know when i when i think of like a final fantasy town this is more what i think of than midgar right you know this like this looks like what we'd expect random dogs everywhere and all and that dog is actually super terrifying he needs way more polygons and when you click on it it just makes a whine noise um, but like every town in every RPG, there is stuff to find, chests to open, rooms to raid, except for that one, because it's locked for now. Being an RPG, of course, you'll be coming back here, and you'll be coming back and be able to get more stuff, because that's how these types of games work. Um, so of course, my first, like with every RPG, first thing I want to do is go around and, hey, talk to everyone, like how that guy just basically saw who we think is Sephiroth, a guy in a black coat with a big looking sword? I sure wonder. Oh, and we have we have this family here straight out of a 90s kids toy commercial, you know. Whoa, gross out your sister. Those are the best. God, watching the the best friends talk about that, uh two best friends play, of course. Um they I love the fact that they're like the only Canadian channel on YouTube that really connects with me. Oh, also, staircase kind of here. Looks important. Let's open it up. What do we find? We got the Peacemaker, which is, of all things, just a gun. <laughs> it's, it's a real normal gun. So, not like, not like a Barrett gun, not like an arm gun. No, 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 this is, well, I mean, this is technically like an, an arm gun. Like, it's, whatever. Um, but no, it's basically, it's for a party member who we won't get for a good long time. Which, I think, is kind of a trap to make it so that they, you sell it, and whatever. Um, cause, and the thing is, this party member is optional too, so it's like, you go through the game and get this weapon, and not know who it's for. In fact, if I didn't use the guide, I most certainly would not have found the character that this is for. Oh my god, that whole thing is crazy. But there's the bar. Or if you, this was uh, uh, on a Nintendo console at this time, it wouldn't have been a bar, it would have been a, a juice bar, probably. But they wouldn't even call that a juice shop. It's so funny, looking at the ways Nintendo had to like change games because of the ESRB and stuff. And we have to stay out of the kitchen. Sadly, no fighting a giant cake or getting baked into something like uh, Breath of Fire 2. That always freaked me out as a kid, that scene. Is it true that Shinra makes monsters? We're just gonna say yes. Even though we don't have discernible evidence just yet about that. But maybe we will soon. Um, so some of these answers, not all them. Um, some of them just, you know, open up different branches of text. But some of them do affect your relationships with other characters. So, you know, for instance, if someone's like, Well, who cares about if we're polluting the planet? And you decide to give a lecture. That will give more points with Barrett. Or if a girl says, you're cute, and you say yes, then, you know, you might lose points with Tifa and Aerith. Stuff like that, you know, so as you see here, even though we're, we're, they're not in our party, you can at least still look at the stats and stuff of characters. Um, so, it's funny, because I looked at the guide, and it's like, we don't recommend buying any materia here, because it's all useless. And I see Earth Magic, and I mistakenly buy two, and I'm like, oh, jeez. Oh no, so I have to sell it back for like even less now, and I'm like, oh, that was a mistake. Oh, that was a mistake, I just wasted money. Gotta be careful with your buttons, kids. 
but I did buy a heal because stuff like healing stuff is probably good to have, even though you get more later. As for weapons, um, I think for the most part, a lot of them aren't as, like, if, if you're paying, like, attention to what you've been getting in the game, then you, you should be pretty good residency because I kind of ran through it. it. It was a case of I wasn't doing good enough. That's fine. Um, see, so, um, there's, as far as I'm aware, there's no crafting and stuff in this game, so I don't know why you, w why you don't just sell your, your old, uh, weapons and stuff. Well, the ones that you can, of course. I do. Because, uh, money in this game is actually quite hard to come by. Um, but I know some people will probably be like, no, keep your weapons and stuff, but that's okay. I, I do, I don't know if I get it this time, but I do like the, the cannon, oh yeah, we do, we almost have enough for it here. The cannonball for, um, Barrett is one that I heard from the guides, people saying, don't get it, it's terrible because what it does is, even though it's a strong weapon, it makes it so that you can't hit the, um, the back row or far away enemies, because again, you know how, how with, um, with Barrett, he's not affected by rows, um, you can put him in the back row and he'll do normal damage because it's a long range weapon, and he also can hit flying enemies who are far away. That's a good thing, but at this point, there's no real enemies that you kind of need it for, so like, I get it anyways. Plus, it's kind of funny to watch him go from having a gun arm to just a big, big ball on his arm that he whacks people with. That's great. In my opinion, that's wonderful. That he still uses as a projectile for supers, too. So Barrett's getting mad at me because we're late, and I'm like, sorry, but, you know, I kind of wanted to. But I think it's time for Cloud's backstory. Or is it? As we'll see later. Ha ha ha. Actually, I haven't even gotten that far in the game yet. So, like, I'm not even sure. Again, like, this is blind for me in the fact that like, I know the plot twist about Cloud's past, but I don't know about it, you know? I don't know, I don't know all the facts about it. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to actually learning about it. But this is definitely a cool section. This is a very, you know, there, there, there's a lot of sections of the game that are very memorable. And for me, actually, this was a very memorable one because I had a friend in school named Jarek. I, I, he was on, go search my channel for, for the, uh, LSD videos, uh, he's in them. He was, he was my friend as a kid, who is the one who would always tell me about video games and stuff. And one of them that he always told me about was Final Fantasy VII. So in that game, uh, or no, in that time, I remember him telling me about this section where Sephiroth's a party member. And then he was going on, oh yeah, my brother then put in a cheat code and I was, we were able to keep Sephiroth through the entire game with us. And I was like, whoa, and I, I, I was a dumb kid, I don't know if he was telling the truth or not, because... My friend Jarek was the type who, one day he came in and he was like, Yo, I got this crazy new video game called Capcom All-Stars, and it had beautiful Joe in it, and it had all these characters that, like, at the time weren't in up uh, in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Like, this was, this was when we were in grade 6, which was 2006. Um, and he was going all about, Oh, yeah, it's real, and then, and then my brother went out and bought the... the what did he call it? He called it, like, the Other Fighters expansion that added in Link, Sonic, um, who else did he say? He said Link, Sonic, I know he said Dante, which is funny, because I don't think he knew at the time Dante was actually Capcom, and then, like, one other, oh, Master Chief, right, so it was Link, Sonic, Master Chief, and, and Dante from Devil May Cry into this game, and oh, and he, he, oh, he, he was the one who filled my mind with all these things that never even existed, but because of him, I know about video games, so I don't hate him, also, I mean, he, without him, I wouldn't have played video games, so, thanks, Jarek. Um, but this is the Nibelheim flashback, which, again, is an iconic memory of the game, even for those who haven't played the game, like I said. This is, a uh, again, like, the, the first disc of the game is really, you know, it's very mile a minute, it feels like. It, there's no stopping, you know, even though it, even though the world opens up, you know, it's, and I was scared when it first opened up. Uh, once you're here, it's like, you know, you, you're still going. Also, this dragon straight up killed Cloud right there. Boom, he's done. Sephiroth, on the other hand, he done, done, no, he's fine. Look at this, look at this damage that's gonna happen. Nil. And look at him just killing. 
You don't even control him. That's how strong Sephiroth is. And it's, and it is nice to establish, you know, um, and I mean, I, I don't feel like this flashback back is, uh, super necessary personally, but, um, you know, it, it's a great way to sort of, cause at this point we have we don't know anything about Sephiroth, right? We just know that he's this crazy badass. So to actually have him on your side and see how much of a badass he is, who kills a dragon in two hitch, hits and don't afraid of anything, you know, it's kind of saying something. Oh yeah, but he still has issues about, you know. Yeah, my mother is Genova. So yeah, he's he's a bit of an interesting fellow still. Um it's interesting cuz he's like he's he's definitely a villain. He's definitely a villain. But at the same time, I don't know, he feels like different than other villains, you know? I I kind of say that for everything. It's, it's, I'm sorry. Um, no, but I, I'm, what I'm just trying to say is that Sephiroth is a good villain. I do feel like it. Um, but as we'll see later though, I don't feel like, I think, like, well, no, I know from reading online that a lot of people are a little confused as to something that happens in, in, with, regarding, you know. Also, I, I, okay, first off, um, I love how Barrett interrupts the, um, the, the flashback, and that actually happens quite a bit here, where if you do things in the flashback that weren't, that don't happen, it, like, cuts it in an actually kind of, like, jarring way. You'll see. I think I do it a couple times. Um, but, uh, what I'm saying is, like, there's, there's a plot twist, sort of, with Sephiroth that a lot of people misinterpret, which, I, again, I'll be getting to later, but it's, uh, it's interesting. It, it, it makes Sephiroth a lot more interesting of villain when you know this plot twist is a thing, you know? But yeah, but like at this point, Sephiroth is like this, he's a celebrity, really, you know? He's like, he's like, he's the, the soldier supreme, you know, at this point. And he says we can visit our family and friends. What a, what a swell guy. And this dude's like, oh my God, Sephiroth's here. I brought a camera. And you can say, take my picture or get back in the house. And then he calls me a fathead. Look at this. Are you Cloud? But he recognizes us. That's crazy. Also, now he says it's it's I'm not good looking. So we're gonna. Oh, then he's like, hey, why don't you take a picture of me? Yeah, let's take a picture with you and Sephiroth. So in the end, he still accomplishes his goal. Also, that is Tifa's master. Yes, Zangin, who's actually just reminds me of Hercule. Also, there's that number 128. Jap Japan loves that number. It's like the number of evil spirits and all sorts of stuff. I just find it funny. He just finds like a a small country girl and he's like, you will be my next master or student. It's great. So monsters have been appearing, but other than that, not much change. You know, it's, it's, it's still a small town. Uh oh, I guess not. Because now everything's dying because the reactor's sucking up everything. You know, like... It's interesting, and I guess I was gonna say, like, you know, it'd be interesting to see, like, because you're thrown into this world and you only know it as it's been industrialized, you know? But I guess you can play certain prequel games and see the world in a more unindustrialized manner. Um, like Final Fantasy X, which a lot of people don't know is a, like, 20,000 year prequel to Final Fantasy VII. That's something that, um, oh, but as you see, he's like, no, I, 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 di I didn't go there. So then he, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, yeah, no, Final Fantasy X in the, the, the Ultimania for it, which is the, like, it's a big ol', big ol', um, art book and, and compendium of information. Um, they actually say that, like, um, spheres from Final Fantasy se uh, 10 are like pro like they're like sort of like related to materia but then what happened was is after the world of Spira dried up um they flew to this planet which is just called planet in Final Fantasy 7 um and colonized it and then like 10,000 years later the people of Final Fantasy 10 or yeah 10 became the people of Final Fantasy 7 so that's an interesting thing 
you know, it's, that is canon, um, that a lot of people don't like. <laughs> Because there's there's always some little connections, like, I think 2 is actually a prequel to 4. But other than that, they're, like, all totally unrelated. Well, they're all in the same multiverse, but different universes, knowing how, like, you know, some things work. But Cloud's mom, I don't know, something about her design, to me, it's, like, the, the blonde hair and orange dress... Something about her has always, like, her design has never meshed with me. Also, she wants me to get an older girlfriend, one that will take care of me. That's, that's kind of weird. It's kind of a weird thing to say. But, like, how long was he with his mom, you know? Something feels very off here, you know? And, and uh, is it on purpose? We'll have to see. But, yeah, no, it's like, it just, this is really funny to imagine Cloud just being here for like weeks while Sephiroth's outside and Cloud doesn't like what's happening there it's you know it's well for obvious reasons as to why he doesn't want to remember it um and you can tell Tifa yeah I went into your house I thought you might be home so I went into your house because remember they were childhood friends and stuff and that's normal to just barge into what your childhood friend's house and look for them I know I do that all the time my childhood friends I just go into their house and as we'll see later uh what we do upstairs so I'm clicking on everything, looking for just anything examinable, because that's kind of what I do, you know? That's that's how RPGs work, man. Nice thing is, with, with just how this game is pretty lenient with its trigger boxes, where you can hit stuff from pretty far away. Cloud, did you go into my room? And I'm like, yeah, totally. Of course I did. So we got her orthopedic underwear, which just in... 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 is actually meant to be panties it's literally just meant to be her underwear and so i'm like yeah totally and she's like cloud we're being serious here so uh if you want to get an elemental material you actually have to play the piano here and i fiddled with this trying to play anything resembling a song for a good like 10 minutes almost i tried i genuinely tried so i cut it out by playing some put just i just cut it but played a little bit of piano right there. That's about it. Uh, no, I cut most of that out because I was like trying and I'm like, come on, I, I can get something resembling a song to come out. You know, uh, but no, you actually have to if you want to get an elemental material later, which elemental material are really good. As I said, they let you imbue elements as well as uh, put it on armor and stuff. So do that. Get it. It's worth it. Was I looking at a guide? Heck yeah, you know it. But I think that's about wraps it up, so let's go talk to the big boy himself, Sephiroth. See what he's up to, staring out a window, having fun. But yeah, we're gonna get some sleep. Um, she's, uh, he's hired a guide for us, how nice. We won't have to worry about getting up there ourselves. And who is it? As we'll see, I wonder if it's gonna be coincidentally this person who we, you know, probably should have expected and I'm standing here waiting like a dork for the cutscene to start. <laughs> I love it when I do that. It's great. Also this dude knows that he still wants his picture. So we talk to everyone and lo and behold it's Tifa in her uh in her ever popular cowboy outfit. Now I hate cowboy culture living in Alberta, the Texas of the North. Um, but I think she pulls it off pretty well. Um, I think it works for her, but it's definitely, I think it was a DLC costume in Decidio 12 and, or sorry, Duodecim, Duodecim, whatever. Um, I think it was a DLC one for that. And honestly, that's not something I would pay for. Uh, I did pay for, for the, um, Kingdom Hearts Sephiroth because that's awesome. Um, and I did pay for Dancer Barts, but, you know, for the most part, eh, most DLC costumes aren't the best. So we get a cute picture taken. Cheese, us, our childhood friend, and Separat. And we even get a picture developed. I wonder if this will become a plot point later, but first, CGI, and the game does this occasionally where it has, um, CGI with text underneath. And, uh, God, just thinking back to, you know, how this must have been. Because that must be... 
because you can't advance it, of course. It's uh, it's hard onto the FMVs, which I'm sure a lot of people love. Uh, but this, so this area, you know, looking at it, it looks like just like an incidental one-off screen. But now you do get to come back, and you do have to explore that yourself, which is always fun. I'm sure this rickety old bridge will be totally fine. I mean, nothing bad has ever happened from one. Such as this. And look at the three, look at, look at the, the, the models on the, the FMV and how you can so clearly see the difference. I love it. Again, that's, that's the downfall of an HD version, you know, anything where you can see the models super well. If it was all blurry, if I was using a, a CRT filter or on a CRT TV, it would look fine. Actually, um, my grandma was planning on on just getting rid of, she has a huge CRT TV, and I actually am trying to get it for myself, because if you've played any older older game on like a new, con on a new TV rather, you'd know why it doesn't look good. Now, popping that onto a CRT, popping, a Super Nintendo onto a CRT for the first time after playing it on a HD TV and just seeing how it looks and seeing how it's supposed to look was truly a magical experience for me. I highly recommend it if you've never done that or, or haven't done it recently. Find one of those CRTs and get it and give it a look. So these enemies here, uh, Sephiroth makes very little work of using things like Bolt 3 or um, it would be Thundaga. As, as uh, Lightning would say, but it's Thundaga, in my opinion. Um, he just totally wrecks him. But later on, when you come back here, those enemies are a pain. And I don't really know why I'm looking for items right now, because really, what I should do is not get them now, and instead just come back and get them in the future when I can actually use them. Also, Ice 3 or Blizzaga. I do prefer the Agas myself versus Ice 3. I do feel like names like Ice 1, Ice 2, Ice 3 are pretty boring. I think the first game with the Agas was Final Fantasy 8, if I recall. Um, can't think of one that came sooner that gave you Fire, Fire, a Fire Aga. Nope, one doesn't come to mind. Mind you, I haven't played much of 8. Uh, 8 hilariously, is the only game I actually, like, physically own of Final Fantasy, versus most of them are all digital re-releases and stuff. Actually, I own both for, for 8. I own both it digitally and physically, and I have not gotten past about an hour or two. I don't know, I can't get into 8, and I know some people stand by and live by 8, but I can't. I just... I need to find a good Let's Play of it, because honestly, I don't think I'm able to... I, I can't stand 8. I mean, graphically, 8 is such an amazing jump from 7, but, uh, gameplay-wise, it's another story. The nice thing is we get to know now how Materia is made, and it's, we're, like, I like how you're totally given this story on how, on how, you know, the Materia is made, magic works, uh, versus, say, again, 10, where spheres are just this thing, like, they're just... They're just a thing, you know? I, I, I've I played through 10. I don't know what the spheres are. But in this one, the materia, you know, they're they're a thing. And also, I like these alluding to characters you already know. That's that's good. I can live with that. You know, I, so, I know some people just hate it because they're like, why don't you just come out and say who it is? Because, I mean, Cloud should probably know. Well, I think Cloud, yeah, if Cloud's with Soldier, he should know Hojo, you know, so... And I'm surprised Cloud didn't, like, connect the dots in flashback form. You know, be like, oh, you know, he's probably talking about Hojo. But then again, that might be treating the audience as, as a dummy, so. Also, look at the scale perspective. Like, that's something that's going to definitely be changed with the remake, is the scale in this. And I've gone on about this, but the scale is definitely something that's very representative in this version. Versus, you know, the remake where it's going to be actual. So that's why a lot of people don't get why they need to break the remake up into several games because they're going from a representative game of a whole world to a more realistic one. Tifa doesn't like being left here. I hope she doesn't try to sneak in or anything. 
her strong, you know, strong will and attitude won't do that. And hey, this place looks very familiar. Huh. It's almost like they just reused the same assets or something. Also, I need to go down here, not up there. Oh. Oh, perspective in pre-rendered things. It's great. You know, I actually really do like that. Um, that was something as a kid that would bother me. But now looking back, I'm like, you know, I can live with it. I can live with it because... It's it's a relic of the older times, and I prefer it to even the full 3D. But this place looks lovely. And how do you think uh, Sephiroth's gonna feel about seeing a giant gated thing with his mother's name on it? I'm sure it'd go fine. Especially looking at these, uh... These tube things. These egg men. What could they be? So we fixed the nozzle. I was wondering, like, what's going on? Oh, Professor Gast! Oh, we're we gonna connect this to Undertale now? Oh, I'm sure this video will get a million likes because of that! But what happens when you're trying to make your own materia, but instead, you also put in person. You get a very, very classic Final Fantasy looking demon dude. Like that face there is so, so clearly Tetsuya Nomura. Like there's something about the way he does his angry faces that it looks so, I, I love it though. Honestly, I do. Um, Nomura, of course, being the guy who does all the monster designs from the, well, not all the monsters, but he did a lot of monster designs for classic Final Fantasy. Um, now he does character designs for everything and went on to being director and story writer. And you can blame everything in Kingdom Hearts on him. Every single thing. Oh, but Sephiroth's not having a good day. Because, you know, he's kind of, he's having a, a bit of a Shadow the Hedgehog moment here, which is absolutely hilarious. I do implore you all to Google Shadow, or no, Sephiroth the Hedgehog. It is very much worth your time. Um, but look how long that sword is. Like, actually compare it to the size of his body. That is huge. It's, it's wonderfully huge. Uh-oh, but looks like they're freaking out. And like, admittedly, you know, if I were to see this part here, I, 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 as a kid, this would probably freak me out quite a bit. Something about him like writhing in pain there and having like the, the weird design, like, yeah, it's, it's a little, little creepy, you know? Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 7 is, is a surprisingly creepy game. You know, Final Fantasies aren't known for being scary games, but this is one that I could definitely see be classified as one. Uh, but this marks the end of this part, guys. Uh, what we're gonna do next part is uh, continue the rest of Calm. And uh, I think there's still a bit... Of, there's no, there is more of a flashback. But next time we'll be back for some more Final Fantasy VII. See you all next week for some more. Ciao.